YouTube, Dawson Ryder here. Welcome to our latest review for Avatar O Sentai Don Brothers. Last week, we took a little bit of a break for a fun filler episode. Wasn't too consequential for the plot, but it was enjoyable nonetheless. But this week, we're back full force with a very important episode with a lot happening. You kind of start off with the makings of a fun filler premise as we focus on Gold again as he's preparing for a visitor from an old friend, one of the friends we met when he was saying goodbye to everyone when he was leaving to become a hero. And he wants to look impressive when she arrives. And so he asks the Dom brothers, like, hey, can we pretend I'm leading or can I lead the Dom brothers so I look impressive AF? And they're all like, no, 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 you still got that evil half, you're really annoying, we hate your face, like, we don't hate you, we just don't like you at all and you're terrible. And they're like, right, Don Momotaro? And he's like, no, let's let him lead it. Could be fun. But I can't lie and say I would let him lead the team, so I got to quit. So he basically quits so that Dragoku can lead the team. And that sets up the premise for the episode. Is It's kind of like a what if Dragoku led the team, and we have him doing a training exercise. Um, before I forget, we do get a, a really quick appearance from the Black Ranger who's having... Um, a really rare sequence of him remembering his girlfriend. That only happens every single episode we watch. Like, seriously, I like the slow burn and the different pacing with the Rangers, but we have so much else going on now with the purple and gold Rangers. When it comes to the Black Ranger, I'm like, crap or get off the pot, dude. Small tangent over. End up having a scene where the Rangers ranger up and they save a truck driver, which leads us to this sort of montage after Dragoku's Drago like, look, we need to call ourselves the Dragon Force or the Dragon Warriors or the... Dungeon Dice Monsters or something. They come up with this new name that they're called and they basically want to become famous. They want to get their name out there. They want to save people and become like ranger influencers. Not influencers, but basically famous. And then so we have this montage of them saving people and getting famous from it and sort of... The, and then they get this, uh, like, award, and then their heads kind of just get away from them. They get big heads from all of this. And while this is all going on, Zenkaiser's kind of just watching them, giving them the stink eye. And he comes to talking to them at the end and being like, you, can't, you know, you've lost your way, not to mention you haven't even been saving people hunting things, the family business. It's actually been Momotaro the whole time, and they have, like, this montage showing how all these instances in which they saved people, it was actually Momotaro saving it in the background, making it seem like he was them. It's been Momotaro in the shadows this whole time, always from the beginning. I kind of didn't like how it skirted on, oh, Momotaro's so great type of territory, because I like the bit where we hate the Red Ranger personality. I like that bit. Obviously, we're going to balance that out as the series goes, but I don't want us to get too far into uh, Red Ranger worship here. And it made for, like, an entertaining-ish premise, but I think the best part of the parp? I think the best part of this story was it was kind of just this entertaining premise about the Gold Ranger and his personal story, but it ultimately had a purpose, as at the end of it, after the Rangers realize that they screwed up, the others go off to go help Don Momotaro, who's been fighting the Monster of the Week on and off, and Gold gets upset because basically he wants to leave the Don Brothers and he's upset that he's been abandoned by it again. And we saw that before where he did not want to accept being second place to Don Momotaro, which caused him to split into his other personality. And this time he goes full on split. And when the Rangers are at the battle, he shows up as his Tora Bolt form. You know, the form is kind of like a silvery form since those are the only two six Ranger colors. But it's a really cool suit. I really like both versions of the suit. I might like the base one a little bit more, but they're still both pretty cool. And he's so much cooler in the rogue, badass form. Like, I really don't like his character uh, when he's not in his weird alternate personality Moon Knight thing. I just, I hate quirky Six Rangers. I'm sorry, I do. They're just always so annoying. And, like, during the beginning of the episode when he's, like, planning to be the fake leader, I'm just like, God, I hate, why do the Six Rangers have to be cartoons? And then I remembered, like, oh, yeah, we have this cool like, badass other half storyline going on. And in a way, I'm kind of surprised it took us so long to debut this because we kind of knew it from the beginning, and it's something that usually Sentai will debut really fast so that they can sell all the potentials of the toys. But we've gotten, like, a nice handful of episodes, not to mention the debut of Murasame, before we actually debuted this form. And it was a cool debut. He's got a cool finisher. Um, he does try to fight Mamotaro. Mamotaro? Mamotaro there at the end. Uh, but Mamotaro escapes into the Megazord battle where they kind of resolve the plot and they all apologize for losing their way. Um, other stuff going on in the episode, though, like I mentioned, the Black Ranger was there briefly. Murasame does show up briefly, basically for another quick fight, this time with Sonoi. But unlike last week's, where it felt just, uh, like, you know, superficial just to be there to fight, we did get a little bit of details about him, as the villains were talking a little bit about the sword, saying that it's like this artificial intelligence, I think that's what they said, something along those lines, like this artificial intelligence that's starting to grow into its own and that they think it being freed had something to do with the council. That was interesting, and it was interesting to see 
um, Murasame this week actually at odds with the villains instead and presented a little bit more about their dynamic and a little bit backstory. Kind of reminds me of the earlier episodes when we were hinting at stuff about the villains and Momotaro himself, you know, kind of slowly revealing details, lifting the veil. Zenkaiser also was in this episode more and there was some kind of significant stuff with him. Like I said, he kind of monitored the Rangers all throughout their shenanigans this week, but then he winds up helping Momotaro in a fight when he's fighting the monster of the week. And, it's, you know, we don't get to see him suit up very often, much less fight. And Momotaro asks him, like, well, who are you? And he's like, oh, I'm a hero. I've always existed to be a hero. But then he says that at the end when he's accepting the hero plaque on behalf of the Rangers that didn't show up. And he gets, like, the Pinocchio lying nose like they did during the episode. So I don't know. A part of me was like, am I overthinking this? And it's just meant to be like, oh, he was susceptible to... Um, being praised as well, or does that mean he's lying and there's something more nefarious, which I think might be the case. Nonetheless, it was nice to get a little bit more hinting and foreshadowing at that storyline as well. And I thought this was overall a really good episode. It was a little bit packed, there was a lot going on, but I liked that it kind of furthered everything. I mean, you had some classic Don Brother shenanigans, but it led to a pretty significant step forward in Gold's story. Um, I'm really interested to see where that goes. Murasame did appear again, like I said, but at least this time we actually got some more details about him. We also got some more time with Zenkaiser and some more hinting at his story, so everything is moving along quite nicely. It was like they made up for last week not having a lot going on by having almost every major plot thread in this episode, but I would give it a 4 out of 5. I really enjoyed this one. There's a lot of plates spinning that I'm interested in. Oh, and I almost forgot, uh, you know, when the Monster of the Week is destroyed and the, the gear goes to somebody, it actually goes to gold and it transforms from a Ryu Ranger 1 to a Kiba Ranger 1 since it uses six Ranger 1s. That's interesting, not because of the Kiba Ranger bit. Well, I guess it is, but I mean, but because that's the first time it's gone to someone other than Zen Kaiser, I think. Has it gone to someone else? But it was interesting that it went to him and it kind of just all tied into the mystery around Zen Kaiser and me being, more cu and me being curious about what's going on with that and the gears too because the gears and their role in it and any potential connections to Zen Kaiser or Zen Kaiser is still out there. But anyway, that's about it for this one, guys. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb the steps and ring that bell so you can get notifications for my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.